Here in Studio One, I've got this female vocal, which you can see in purple here. And if we look at the track in the console, we can see that there's three plugins inserted there. The second one I've renamed to V Comp for Vocal Compressor. And just like any other plugin, as you'd expect, I can bypass it by clicking on this little blue switch here, or I can drag it off to another location in the chain. I could even drag it to another track or a bus, etc as you would expect from any plugin, except this is no ordinary plugin because it's actually hooked up to one of my pieces of hardware, which you can see in the background there in my rack. On this occasion, it's hooked up to my Warm Audio WA76 compressor. And Studio One makes it super easy for you to treat a piece of hardware like this as a plugin within your mix. Let's open it up and kind of see it in action. And when I do open it, you can see before I renamed it, the plugin is actually called Pipeline XT. So let's just play a bit of our track and see it in action. Cause I've given all you want, you've taken all you can, I'll take it on the chin now. So in the display there, you were seeing two lines, a blue and an orange line in that graph there. And they were representing the difference between the send and return signal from the hardware. And you can see the controls for send and return on the left and right hand side are color coded in orange and blue, okay? Now there's a few other nice things that this plugin does for us. One of the pains of using hardware is of course, if I come back to this mix in a few weeks or a few months time, I may well have changed the settings on the compressor itself, okay? And I'll want to know what those were for this particular project. So one of the things it does, it just allows you to make some notes here, which I've done in this case, you know, for all the different settings on my compressor. Another thing you can do is actually take a photograph of your uh, hardware component at the time, and then you can insert that in here. I've done that here. You can see it's very a very close up view of my hardware. If I click on this picture, it'll actually show the whole thing, and I can recover my settings from there. That's a really nice little touch they have in there. So I think that they've made it as easy as possible to integrate hardware into your mix, but there is a little bit of a setup, and we're gonna talk about that in this video. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now before we get into this, there are some hardware requirements I think you should be aware of and they mainly relate to your audio interface. I highly recommend, especially if you're gonna be doing this regularly, that you use an audio interface which has more than the, just the standard two outputs which normally go to your monitors, okay? So I'd recommend something with at least four outputs and that's gonna depend on your needs and budget as to which one you are using. I've got some quick recommendations for you here I think this Focusrite Scarlet 4i4 is pretty good for this. This has got an extra couple of outputs apart from the main ones that will go to your monitor. Um, I can always recommend anything from Audient. This is uh, one of their more recent models, an ID24. It's also got some extra outputs apart from the main ones and some great other features on there as well. Now, in my case, I've also got a Universal Audio X4, which has got some additional outputs. And my main audio interface is an Antelope Audio Discrete 8 Synergy Core Pro, it's got a really long title anyway. That's got a gazillion inputs and outputs. And that's the one I'm actually gonna be using in today's video, but you don't need something as fancy as that, okay? Just so you know, the principles are the same, regardless of which audio interface you'll be using. Now, apart from that, you'll just need to know that you need to uh, do a cable from one of those outputs at least to an input in your hardware, whether that's a compressor or whatever you're using in terms of your hardware, and then a cable from the output of that hardware to one of the inputs on your audio interface, creating a nice little loop there. That's the basics of the setup. Now I happen to have mine in a rack over there, so there's some additional things going on with a patch bay. You don't need to worry about that for the moment. We're just gonna talk about this today in terms of just hooking this up 
to one uh, piece of hardware. Now, before we really get into it, there are some little bits of setup and preparation you have to do from within Studio One itself. So let's dive into that. So to make it easier for you to see what's going on, I've created a fresh project with just that vocal track in there. And the first thing that I want to do is set up my inputs and outputs for my audio interface, okay? So I'm gonna start off by pressing Control period or Command period if you're on the Mac or Control full stop if you're outside of the United States there's so many different terminologies for this but anyway I'm in here with song setup and I'm going to go across to audio IO setup I'll click on that now because of the way my brain works I'm actually going to start off with the output because that's the first thing that happens the sound gets sent uh, via an output to the hardware so I'm clicking on my output tab um, and depending on your needs you'll either click on add mono or add stereo now all of my hardware just has one input it's mono okay so I'm going to do add mono but you may have hardware which has stereo inputs and outputs in which case you would click on add stereo so I click on add mono now studio one automatically creates this new output and selects the next available output yeah which is the third one in my case however you could select one of the other outputs if you wish like so so I'm leaving that on number three and I'm just going to rename it to let's go for effects out original huh okay let's go over to inputs we'll click on the tab up there and we'll do the same here i'm going to add a mono input okay so this is for the sound coming back to my audio interface after it's been through my hardware again it's selected the first available input which is the third one that one works fine for me so i'll go ahead and rename that to effects in so that's my interface ready to go. I'll just click on apply and then OK. And now I can set up my plugin. So I'm going to head over to the insert section on my vocal track here. Click on the plus icon. Now I've recently used Pipeline, so it appears in my recent selections here. But if you go looking for it, there are both mono and stereo versions available. So choose the one which suits your needs. Mine, of course, is a mono setup. So I'm going to select Pipeline Mono there. So the plugin pops up and the first thing I need to do is assign those inputs and outputs that I created earlier so on the left hand side at the top we see this drop down menu this is where we select our send output okay if I click on that I've actually only got one choice because studio one doesn't allow you to select your main outputs the one that goes to your monitors so it's very easy for me to select here because there's only one available which is effects out okay now on the right hand side is where I'm going to select my return input so I'll click on this drop down here and I'm going to select that effects in which I created earlier that's the basic setup and I'm just going to quickly go ahead and rename this here to WA76 because that's the compressor I'm going out to now whenever you're going to send a signal out from your audio interface and it's going to do something and then come back there will be some delay created okay or some latency we don't really want that because um, it's going to create some sort of weird sound to our signal or phase issues now before we fix this and it's very very easy I just want you to notice a couple of numbers here uh, at the top right you can see here it says for me 42.77 milliseconds this is the calculated latency for my current setup okay um, but you know depending on your settings you could have a different number there but we need to further fine tune this just to make sure the returning signal is in sync with the original okay now in order to do that we just go up to the top and click on this auto button here click on that and studio one does its magic we can see here the sent signal in orange and the return signal in blue okay it's been compressed on the way by the way through my compressor so they've got some different um, uh, volumes there but you can see that those waves are perfectly in sync with each other. That's what we want. If you did need to manually adjust this, you can do that either with these arrows here or by typing in a value here in terms of samples, okay? But for me, it automatically does this for me perfectly every single time. So the next thing I want to do is calibrate the level coming back from my hardware to make sure that if my hardware was bypassed, I get exactly the same signal coming back as I sent, okay, in terms of actual level. Now, some pieces of hardware do have a bypass button on them, so you can just engage that now if you've got that. But if, like me, you don't have a bypass button, I would recommend just unplugging that hardware 
hardware uh, from our little loop at the moment and just doing one cable from the output you're using on your interface to the input you're using okay and this just makes sure we get an undisturbed signal so we can balance the send and the return now in order to send a signal um, a, a reliable signal we're going to use a plugin called tone generator before i do that i'm just going to pin my pipeline xt plugin here by just clicking on that pin button on the top right just so it stays in place and i'm going to go to the insert section uh, on my vocal channel click on plus and this tone generator plugin which i'm going to select here does come with studio one okay so i'll just click on that that brings that up i'm also going to pin that so it doesn't move okay now when i generate some sound with this in a moment you you're not going to hear it because i've actually got my master bus muted because let's face it none of us needs to hear a sine wave okay um so you can do that if you wish as well now i like to set the level to minus six decibels okay i just find that is nice and accurate for me so i'm just going to type that value in here at the moment for the level section here so i'll type in minus six okay now before i switch it on there's one more thing i almost forgot it go over to your inserts and make sure that the tone generator is before pipeline xt okay so i need to drag that up so that it's just before because obviously otherwise pipeline is not actually going to hear it okay so the next thing i can do is turn on my tone i'll do that now and you can see um, the send level here on the left and the right are quite different from each other now the next step is going to be different depending on your audio interface you may have a knob on the front of it to adjust gain or you may be able to adjust it from software like i can so that's what i'm going to do now so i'm just going to bring up the interface from the for my audio interface okay um, and I can adjust the gain from here. As I say, this will be slightly different for you. So I need more gain to match those two signals to bring that up to minus six over here. So I'm just going to push the gain control up until it shows minus six. I don't think you have to be overly precise with this, um, but I, and I think that's good enough at the moment. So now that I've done that, you know, I've set the level there, I can make, if I've unhooked my hardware, I can hook it back up again, and I can now um, turn off and get rid of this tone generator plugin, okay? Now what you might like to do at the moment, because you're all ready to go now, is actually save this um, as a preset, you know, in case you come back to using this hardware and this setup again, okay? So the next thing we're going to talk about is actually now that you've got this working, how you implement this into a final mix. OK, so now my hardware effect is being applied. Let's just have a quick listen to make sure of that. Because I've given all you want, you take. OK, so that's all happening. Now, when I export my song, or when I mix it down, I want to make sure, of course, that this effect is being included. However, that effect isn't going to be included because the sound needs to be run through it in real time that effect hasn't been recorded anywhere yet okay but studio one knows this and quite cleverly if we go up to song at the top here click on that and then go to export mix down when we look at this option at the bottom right here um, we can't actually select this we can't deselect it i should say and this is the option to use real-time processing which is what we need to do to include that effect so when i click on okay to export this song it's actually going to play the whole song so that it can include the effect like this because i've given all you want you've taken okay but you may be ahead of me here i think you may be thinking well that's fine if i just want to use that one effect with that one setting on that one track but what if i want to use that hardware with different settings on different tracks well in that case you're going to need to print those tracks ready for mix down let's talk about that next okay so the principle here behind what we're calling printing is that we're going to record the output from our current vocal track here to a new track but it's going to include the sound of that hardware that we've used and also any other plugins that we might use on the track now what i'm going to show you here is a kind of what i'm going to call a workaround because i think there may be a bug with studio one here but i may be wrong it may be that i'm just trying to to do this in the wrong way but anyway my method works perfectly it should work for you as well so the first thing i'm going to do is create a new track okay so i'll go here and add a mono track why am i doing a mono track because my original track is mono and i want it to stay mono 
that's a part of the problem, but we'll get back to that. Now, when we select an input here, yeah, we can select our regular audio interface inputs. And what I'd expect to see here is a list of tracks, including my vocal track, but I can't see it. That may be where the bug is, but let's, let's look at the workaround. So the first part of the workaround is to change this newly created track to a stereo track. And we're going to do that by clicking on this little button here for the channel mode. Yeah, I'll click on that. It's now a stereo track. Now, if we look at our list of inputs, we can see tracks there, yeah? And then in the tracks selection, we've only got one to choose from, but we've got that vocal track. So I can select that as an input and I'll arm it for recording. I'll turn off um, our monitoring here. Yes, it's just ready to record. And in actual fact, if I go ahead and hit record, let's see what happens. Cause I've given all you want, you've taken all you can. You could see a signal happening there, but nothing's actually been recorded, okay? So this is the next part of my workaround. I found that if I go back to the original track, the vocal track here, and also change that to a stereo track, I'll just click on that. So it's temporarily got a stereo output. Now I can hit record for this track. Cause I've given all you want, you've taken all you can, I'll take... And you can see that it's now recorded that track. It's in stereo, okay? But you can also see it has been compressed. You'll, you'll see it more clearly in a moment. So just to sort of rectify this back to how I want it, I'll go back to my original track, just change that back to mono processing for the moment. That's fine. And with my second track, I'll also change that to mono processing. I'll click on my event here and I'll press control B for bounce. Okay. And I'll bounce that track. And you can see that that is now in mono. And here you can more clearly see that it's definitely been compressed. You can see the change in the waveform there. So from there on, I've now got that effect preserved and baked into the track. I can now go ahead and use that hardware on other tracks with different settings. And of course, I would want to now mute my original track. Now, if I do that and I'm no longer actually using pipeline at all because I've printed all of my tracks, then I can do, a, you know, the regular mix down that I would normally do, which doesn't have to be in real time. Talking about exporting your songs, when you do come to exporting and mastering your songs, of course, Studio One has a whole section dedicated to that called the project page. I've made a little mini series about this, which you can find in this playlist right here. If you watch that, you'll probably know everything you need to know about the project page.